and ma'am okay so uh, shall we start or uh, should we wait for a little while or uh, we expecting more people to join uh, ma'am or 5 minutes wait okay we'll wait for 5 minutes and then we'll start all right oh, okay ma'am okay Stay hydrated. We will start our session with Kritika, ma'am, on recent trends in sports physics. Am I audible? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, is the screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ma'am, you can so, please make uh, it full screen if that's possible. Sorry. Ma'am, uh, actually, it's not showing in full screen. Uh, okay. Uh, how is it showing? Like uh, on my laptop, it's showing me on full screen. Ma It's visible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, we'll start. Yes. Okay. Uh, so good evening, everyone. First of all, sorry for the delay and the technical issue that has come up. First of all, I would like to wish you all a very happy World Physiotherapy Day. proud of everyone uh, we are all doing a great job being physios and um, our role in sports physiotherapy is something that, that is much needed and something that the world is actually awaiting so a big thank you to wings institute for giving me this opportunity to present in front of you all on this occasion of world physiotherapy day so thank you to the entire team of wings for having trust and faith in me and i'm really grateful to be a part of this so um can we go to the next slide please okay so when we say sport or uh, the layman term of sport brings to our mind many different things or many different activities or uh, many different kind of physical work that people do but if you go to see the actual definition definition of sport different organizations will give you different definitions but there is a united or unanimous definition of sport which has been brought about by an institute which is called a sport accord now a uh, sport accord is the all over or the uh, global governing body of sport and they have said that you can have different definitions but to classify any activity as a sport it should have an element of competition it should not harm any living creature should not rely on equipment provided by a single supplier should not rely on luck and most importantly it can be physical sport like athletics or badminton football or whatever on field events it can even be mind games like a uh, chess or carrom it can even be motorized sport so sport is not just limited to something that a uh, athlete would be playing on field so uh, being a physiotherapist we must be aware that sport is a very wide term and it encompasses many different aspects and many different types of sports so if tomorrow a formula 1 racer has any injury and he comes to you so that can also be classified as a sport injury so that is the reason we need to know what exactly we mean by sport and it is a very wide arena next slide please so if we see the popularity of sports i am sure uh, a lot of you would be familiar with this the most common and the most loved sports by all uh, or a lot of people globally is football where we have almost 4 million people who are following this game or you know for whom this game is like uh, a lot uh, a lot of their involvement a lot of their time is consumed by this game and followed by cricket hockey tennis volleyball and so forth so when there is a such a strong fan following 
it is very important that those players or those athletes they maintain their physical health they maintain their well being and they are able to perform because uh, this is an entire industry here that we are talking about it's not just one small thing okay can we go to the next slide so if we take a look at the tokyo 2021 summer olympics just have a look at the number of athletes who participated so there were around 11500 athletes who participated in that event but they had almost 79000 support staff so uh, the the ratio is such that you are needing a lot of support staff and we as physiotherapists or rehab professionals are a major part of that support staff so what i'm trying to convey here is that do not consider yourself to be someone who is just treating patients in the clinic and that's why we are here we are here to learn about sports rehab or the recent trends in sports because sports physiotherapy of course with all due respect to all other faculties i don't mean to say that the other branches of physiotherapy like your neuro cardio etc are um, not great or something but uh, being a sports physio myself i obviously have a greater perspective and a wider um, reach in this field so uh, we as sports physios or even after your ug or after your bpt you can specialize you can take up courses uh, specific to sports physiotherapy because that is a very huge market i mean it's a very wide arena you can have a lot of employment opportunities and even if you see the gender participation or the gender balance previously there used to be more of male athletes who used to participate but now we have almost an equal proportion of male and female athletes who are taking active participation in sports or in games so that gives you and me as physios a very um, very strong work opportunities a uh, very strong opportunities to enhance or to to put into use our skills next slide please now when we look at the scenario in india we all uh, are aware that the khelo india movement which is uh, initiated by the government of india uh, to enhance sport participation so this movement has given a even bigger push or a even bigger greater momentum to sport participation in india and as we all know that you have more and more participation from indian athletes and they are winning a lot of medals in olympics and bringing name and fame to the country so you and me as physios are playing a very important role in these athletes lives so that they are able to perform okay can we go to next slide so as the performance in sports increases obviously the rate of injury has also gone up it is not that just because the participation has increased the injury levels have come down or the athletes are very well conditioned if you actually go to see in the rural parts of india or um, in the northern and the north east north, north eastern belt the athletes have very 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 poor uh, support system in terms of their rehab in terms of their food and things like that so if you see the injury statistics the injury statistics have also gone up tremendously next slide so here comes our expertise as a sports medicine specialist now understand one thing when we are working with sports people or when we are working with athletes you are not just working as a physio alone uh, you you have to be a, um, an all inclusive individual where you are addressing multiple concerns now when we talk of sports medicine it's not limited to one specific thing it's actually an umbrella term which primarily encompasses your performance that is your athlete's physical performance and your injury management so your role or my role as a sports physio will be to cover aspects of both the performance as well as the injury management so even when the athlete is performing well it doesn't mean that your role has stopped he will require to be under your supervision to see to it that he is able to perform at that peak level consistently when he stops taking training or when he stops training under a physio his performance is automatically going to go down obviously because he does not have the knowledge of anatomy physiology biomechanics pathomechanics so that's where you your expertise comes in and of course when the athlete is injured you as a physio are going to rehabilitate the athlete back to the pre injury level next slide 
so what is the role of a sports physio so the essential role of a sports physiotherapist is to provide rehab and treatment of injuries and also to provide support for performance by injury prevention and later on obviously maintenance and recovery sessions so you as a sports physiotherapist are not just dealing with the injury recovery you are dealing with the athlete right from the beginning of their career so you have to start with injury prevention can we go to the next slide so your athlete care it will go in a particular format now first of all you will be playing a role for injury prevention because you want to prevent injuries then you will go to acute intervention wherein if the athlete sustains any injury you will be managing that injury you will help that athlete to enhance the performance and return to the sport next you will be playing the role of an advisor where you are going to educate the athlete you are going to counsel them to promote a healthy lifestyle prevent doping and other malpractices and last but not least you are going to also be a professional researcher so that's where today's role comes in where you're going to learn what are the recent advances or the newer skills to enhance your athlete's performance can we go to the next slide so <clears throat> we all know that your rehab or the rehab that is planned by a physio uh, especially for a sports person or for an athlete will go in a certain specific manner so initially you will begin with rest ice compression elevation and referral which is your pricer or riser therapy then you will go to stretching strengthening conditioning training training etc and finally it will be return to play so this is just a basic hierarchy that each one of us follows and within this hierarchy you will be having different modes or modules of treatment or different techniques that you will be applying and finally your aim will be that you have to enable the athlete to return to the field next slide so in order to enable your athlete to return to the ground or to be able to play again previously we used to use many different approaches uh, a lot of you may be thinking that these these are also the current trends of course they are i don't deny it but um, when you look at the recent perspectives these will sound conventional or more traditional so they include your sports massage which is something that even masseurs do you have mfr that is your myofascial release taping taping is relatively new but as on date i will still consider it as a very old form of taping because taping is something that i learned 10 years ago so for me it is still conventional it is not recent uh, much uh, a little later on developed iastm cupping dry needling etc etc i don't uh, i'm not against any of these um, approaches i totally respect all these approaches but because today's topic uh we need to discuss about the recent advances so i would like to try to shift your focus away from just these few things because when we talk of sports physiotherapy it is just these few things that people talk of or uh it comes to their mind so i want to try and shift your focus to something that's new can we go to the next slide yes so the first thing that i would like to uh, tell you all about is vr or virtual reality so i'm sure a lot of you must have used this or must be aware of it or um, must have read about it probably i'm not too sure but um, when we talk of virtual reality in sports physiotherapy it is very very new concept it is something that uh, in india it, it is present only in uh, your abhinav bindra targeting performance center which is the abtp centers which are present in uh, pune and uh, bhubaneswar which is used for sports training and athletic training can we go to the next slide can we go to the next slide please yeah so what virtual reality so the the use of virtual reality in sports rehab is something that's totally unconventional and it is actually you can say breakthrough technology so this virtual reality it actually uses what we call as mental imagery so you have a computer generated simulation of a three dimensional image okay but 
the main feature is that here your environment is three dimensional it is not real but you can interact with that environment in a manner which seems real so the athlete has a feeling that he or she is in a real environment okay can we go to the next slide so don't go into the details of this this is just a basic basic circuit diagram with which you can understand how a virtual reality works in sports so you have a display or a monitor where you can see your responses or um, and then you have certain sensors so sensors are attached to different parts of the athlete's body so you can have sensors on the palm you can have sensors on the shoulder or uh, uh, on your uh, biceps to see the amount of force that the athlete is able to generate while playing so suppose you are training a badminton uh, player using vr so what will be done is that uh, can we go to the next screen uh next slide please uh okay i'm so sorry i'm having to trouble you dipali uh can we go to the previous slide okay so i'll come back to that part again because that part that those images are a little later so let me just explain to you how this entire vr works so like like i discussed with you about that diagram that circuit diagram of how uh the sensors are placed so the information is obtained from those sensors it is sent to the computer or the processing unit which is attached to your display so whatever responses the athlete is generating is monitored is recorded and it is actually um objective data so you have that data to analyze and because um, it it is actually recreating the experiences so suppose an athlete is playing he is a football player so he'll have a um, display screen where it will be it will appear to the athlete as if he is playing on field so what they are doing here is they are using this principle of psychology that we called as imagery okay so imagery means you are recreating experiences in the human mind by using your sensations or your sensory experiences now because you are using your sensory experiences or your sensory tracks your brain perceives it to be real and thus the brain gives a reaction which is physiological like the brain feels that yes you are actually on the ground and you are actually on the field and you are playing so when you are playing the way you will respond the brain responds in a same manner okay so you are actually feeling an unreal event or a unreal time or an unreal environment to be real so you are actually cheating your brain if you go to see but that principle is beneficial because every time for example suppose you are a uh, footballer uh, there will be certain weather conditions like suppose in india say it's raining tremendously you can't go on the field and you can't play and uh, for example like the place where i am in i am in mumbai in mumbai it rains for 3 months of the year so if i don't train for continuously 3 months as a footballer my conditioning levels are going to come down so using this technology i can see that my conditioning levels are maintained okay so though i'm cheating my brain but physiologically i can remain fit even at the time when i'm not able to actually physically go on field and play can we go to the next slide so it has various advantages first and foremost you don't require any paraphernalia means you don't require a big football field you don't require actually a net you don't require a goalkeeper to stand there and see whether your goal is being missed or not you can place items or you can remove items from that virtual environment okay even if you place or remove items it gives that person or that athlete a sense of reality though it is not real okay now there are multiple variables that you can introduce you can introduce different types of surface you can introduce different types of uh, uh, forces like um, the different direction in which the ball is coming or um, you can include different experiences and the most important thing is that it gives you a feeling of being real so that the athlete will wear the vr glasses or the virtual reality glasses through which he will feel that he is playing in that real environment and he will give similar responses he may not be holding a bat 
remember he or he may just be simply holding the bat but the sensors will be attached to the palm so with the with the force that he is hitting the ball the ball is not real the ball will be on the screen but the athlete will feel that it is real and with that feeling the athlete will hit the ball and that will generate a force which will be recorded by the sensors so that will help the athlete to keep himself or herself trained even at times when actual training is not possible so these are the main advantages of vr or virtual reality next slide please so if you see here in this image this is uh, uh, the picture of where that athlete is being trained for football so you can see his own vr glasses there is a screen where the ball is so the uh, and the the floor that is created is like a grass which is like the field football field so that is giving the athlete a feeling of being in a real world next slide please so this is again an image here you can see on the dorsal aspect of the tibia there are certain sensors which are attached and the athlete is actually not kicking the ball if you can see the ball is on the screen so is he is just mimicking that movement or uh, simulating that movement as though he was in a real environment next slide so this is the uh, ABTP center that I was talking about, the Abhinav Bindra Targeting Performance Center. There they have something which is very exclusive, which is called as a D wall. If you just uh, re read on that image, which is below that screen, you can see the D wall is written. So there, what they do is that the athlete will hold. For example, this she is a weightlifter, so she is holding that weight and she'll be performing the deadlift or the lifting. And the uh, biomechanics are recorded and displayed to the athlete on the screen. So this is more like a biofeedback okay but the technology is not purely biofeedback it is a com combination of um, vr as well as biofeedback so uh, can we go to the next slide okay so that was about uh, vr or uh, virtual reality in sports now let's come to cryotherapy now cryotherapy is something that we all are familiar with from the ug level onwards we are taught about cryotherapy the different methods um using ice packs and frozen ice or ice flakes etc etc everything but when we uh, in the world of sports cryotherapy is something that is given a lot of importance not only in the form of vapor coolant sprays or ice sprays but now what we have is something which we call as whole body cryotherapy so here what is done is that the entire body of the athlete is immersed in these cryotherapy chambers where the temperature is anywhere between minus 110 to minus 140 degrees celsius okay now you must be wondering that oh my god this is like tremendous cold minus 110 is 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 freezing way beyond freezing point so what is done is that we have two anti chambers so before you directly go into minus 110 or minus 140 from room temperature the athlete goes into one chamber which is at minus 10 he gets acclimatized to that system, goes into the next chamber, which is at minus 60, gets acclimatized to that, and from there he moves on to minus 110. Can we go to next slide? So what happens here is that, uh, I'll explain the physiological effects, but here, uh, before that, just let me briefly tell you about these chambers. So these are basically metal chambers and they have a waterproof lining from within so that there is no water condensation on the athlete's body and they have emergency alarms etc so that if the athlete feels any un any uh, discomfort or something he can immediately contact the outside world and uh, many of these chambers they are not attached to the ground so they can be carried and they can be placed at different locations and you have compressors which provide the cooling system and obviously the gas is nitrogen which is non toxic gas okay next slide Okay, so um, as we all know, the primary effect of cryotherapy is to cut down on the inflammation and enhance your post-exercise recovery. Now, uh, when we talk of athletes, when they perform in a particular task or they perform in a game or they're doing training, what happens most importantly is that they suffer a lot of muscle soreness or entire body soreness and production of metabolites. So when they, uh, after an after an event or after a game, Many of the athletes go for whole body cryotherapy. So after the event, immediately they'll go into that cryo chamber. 
they'll sit there for 5 to 10 minutes so what happens is that the anti inflammatory effect is come down immediately so the person does not require much time for recovery otherwise recovery from post exercise soreness itself will take 24 to 48 hours on a minimum basis and imagine if uh, when we uh, deal with these elite athletes they have games which are scheduled back to back so they don't have much time for recovery and that's where this uh, wbc or whole body cryotherapy comes into rescue next slide okay so uh, we have two types of chambers one is a cryo chamber which is like a big uh, kind of room where three or four athletes can go in at the same time and take the session and you also have what is called as a cryo barrel where it's a vertical cabin and uh, you are immersed only from below your neck so your head is up you are breathing air at room temperature but your entire body is uh, cooling down okay so these are just two types depending on uh, it varies from company to company and um, each um, of your uh, sport organization or your teams will have different different types of cryo barrels or cryo chambers okay next slide okay so that was about uh, cryotherapy or wbc or whole body cryotherapy the next thing that i would like to uh, discuss about is what is called as wearable resistance now resistance training is something that we all use as physios for the strengthening purposes to enhance the muscle performance to enhance uh, the patient's ability to lift weights etc etc everything but what we as physios normally use for resistance training is our therabands weight cuffs dumbbells barbells and all those things there is one company in malaysia which is called as movement technology leela movement technology they have come up with what is called as wearable resistance so this is uh, called as exogen or exoskeleton generation wherein you can wear those resistance garment so this is basically a garment which an athlete can wear and then perform the task so it becomes very easy you don't have to carry your dumbbells anywhere you don't have to carry any other things anywhere you can just the athletes may any times you know they carry these things in their kit and uh, the advantage of this wearable resistance is that you wear that garment and you have many pockets in that so you can keep adding or removing resistance so you can put as little as 50 grams of weight or even 10% of the wearer's body weight and it can be applied in any sport so even suppose um, you want to train a person for strengthening if you are strengthening the biceps with a dumbbell you will have to hold the dumbbell and you know just keep doing elbow flexion so that doesn't relate to the functional task like if you want to train say a tennis player so you will have to train elbow extension for example so just holding a by uh, dumbbell and doing elbow extension like this is not correlating with the functional task of hitting a ball like with a tennis racket so the advantage of this wearable resistance or exoskeleton is that you can wear it on your arm while you are performing the task so you can even combine this with the virtual reality that i talked to you previously about so you can have a vr environment or a virtual reality room you can ask the athlete to put a wearable resistance on their arm or forearm and simultaneously train next slide please so this wearable resistance has a major advantage that it involves all four laws of training so it is individualized it is specific it is putting an overload on the system it is bringing about overtraining and most importantly it is work relevant so it is relevant to that functional activity or the task which you want that athlete to learn it is not something generalized it is very very specific next slide so if you can see here this is just a brief image for the description uh, if you can see the image on the right side where the athlete has worn the garment and he's running he's not actually running on a track that is also a vr environment which is created but he's wearing that resistance and running which will help to bring about strengthening next slide so this we uh, variable resistance is very very important or very easy to use in the early stage of rehab and in return to sports because uh, the body is still healing so even the early stages of rehab if the athlete is not able to go on field and train he is not able to carry a 1 kg dumbbell or a weight cup you can use this variable resistance to see to it that the athlete can start with the training so that he doesn't become deconditioned next slide 
so like i told you the advantage is that it can prevent any loss or deficiencies in the performance attributes be it physi physiological deficiencies or psychological deficiencies and it has also been observed that there is no on field deficiency so if you train an athlete with variable resistance in a virtual reality environment you will get the same responses that the athlete will have on field so it will not be like during the training you know many times we observe that yes when i'm training him the athlete is performing well but that same athlete when he goes on field may not perform well so that uh, problem is solved with this technology and it is very user friendly you just have to wear the garment and put the resistance that's all next slide okay so now coming on to uh, a more a newer uh, form of rehab which is called as bfr or blood flow rehabilitation before i talk about this i would like to tell you that there is not much evidence about bfr yet bfr trainings have been started in india very recently uh, this is just a strategy where you apply a cuff or a band around the limb which partially restricts your blood flow so what you are doing here is that you are allowing the um deoxygenated blood to remain in that part while it is training and basically creating an aer anaerobic response so uh, next slide so the bfr will create an ischemic and hypoxic muscular environment because you are putting a cuff and you are occluding the blood flow to that area so there's no blood flow that part will be ischemic there will be anaerobic metabolism there leading to production of lactates metabolites and that anaerobic response will cause increase in the development of muscle protein okay the advantage primarily of this is that it can be used in the earlier stages of rehab so when an athlete is injured you can still start with shorter levels or smaller levels of bfr even if the athlete is not able to go on to the conventional weight training or uh, load training you can start with bfr which will help that muscle protein build up to happen and it will not allow the deconditioning next slide please so there are different types of bfr systems and before we start this bfr we measure what is called as lop or limb occlusion pressure so you have two basically two systems of bfr one where you have to measure that uh, limb occlusion pressure manually and another type where it is an automated or a smart sensors are there which will measure the limb occlusion pressure and set the pressure accordingly so if you see in the image that cuff is put around the thigh that person is actually holding a weight and then he is doing squats so uh, the uh, blood flow to the quadriceps is obstructed and that is promoting more and more development of the quadriceps muscle next slide please so the advantages like i told you you can begin training with this at earlier stages of rehab you can use very lower amount of weight so here weight means the pressure when you are uh, the limb occlusion pressure when you are setting you can set the pressure to much lower values you can use very minimal loads of 20 to 40% and it's very easy to apply you just have to tie the cuff and it takes around just 10 minutes to set up the device so it's not time consuming for the therapist as well as for your athlete next slide please so uh, now coming on to the electrotherapy aspect now this is something i just want to briefly uh, talk about now there are different uh, techniques in electrotherapy that we use it initially started with short shock wave uh went on to high intensity laser takar and now in 2017 there was a very new system which was introduced which is called as sis or your super inductive system next slide okay can we go to the next slide please so this super inductive system is uh, one of the modalities which i really like and um, it is it is extremely effective and the most important advantage is that it can be applied to any part of the body so this actually works on a focused high intensity electromagnetic field so if you see though that image on the right side it has a kind of a coil so that coil is where that electromagnetic field is created and that causes depolarization of the neuromuscular tissue 
and here uh, you have the advantage of selecting the different frequencies of stimulation and according to the frequency you select you get the desired therapeutic effect can we go to the next slide so this uh, superinductive system is actually what we call as frequency specific pain management so you have different frequencies for management of pain so when your athletes are in the acute stage of rehab this device comes in very handy because you see uh, this actually has an applicator you see the 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 image uh, it will show you that it has arms which have certain hinges with which you can move it and you can place it on different parts of the body and depending on the frequency of stimulation that you choose like you can use the pain gate theory you can use the uh, endogenous opioid theory depending on the pain stages that your athlete is in okay next slide so the therapy sequence here is very simple very easy to apply not time consuming you examine the area you put your settings in the applicator you just have to press a button and the machine will start there is no noise nothing that heat will not feel anything there is no heat nothing at all it's just that electromagnetic field which will create your therapeutic effect next slide so uh, just quickly will brief you about uh, platelet rich plasma therapy this is a system before uh, going into it i would like to say that it is not completely researched it is not thoroughly researched but uh, some athletes uh, the world famous athletes like tiger woods also they he does it but it's not uh, totally scientifically backed here what they do is the patient's blood is taken it is put up in a centrifuge and it is spun at very high speeds so that you get a concentrate of um, platelets and plasma and that is reinjected into the affected part and they believe that it promotes healing because tendons and ligaments naturally have very poor healing properties so using this uh, method they can promote healing in these tissues and uh, thereby reduce the recovery time but the literature efficacy for this is not significant so i would not uh, promote obviously as physios we don't do this but we need to be aware of something like this which exists and also it is an extremely costly procedure okay so um, can we go to the next slide so this is just a, um, a a basic a brief kind of feedback which i have clubbed from different athletes and different people all over the world which have given about the different modalities and uh, with this i would like to conclude my presentation can we go to the next slide so i would like to conclude my today's presentation with a very famous quote that we use with our athletes we tell them all the time that you have to challenge yourself okay so your rival is what you were yesterday and uh, this challenge is something that actually brings out the real spirit in athletes and helps them to be better and better and better and compete actually with themselves so uh, i believe all of you today have also taken up this challenge on this particular day of world physiotherapy day where you are enriching yourself with better knowledge and that will help you to grow in future i'm really uh, sure about that so with this i would like to conclude my presentation uh, anyone for questions any questions please ask her ma'am the seminar was phenomenal such a <laughs> new you. technology and everything is emerging at a very fast pace at a yes. very fast level yeah so that's actually I fascinating only hope, uh, and uh actually uh i i have restricted you know just the basics of it it takes a long time but yes, i had to mind. actually restrict myself and uh, cut it short so that my actually main aim was you should be i should be able to give you a gist of at least an overview of what different things are there so if mm -hmm. you have that stimulus you can still go and read up a little more about it but if you don't have that stimulus itself then you will not be aware like if i only talk about vr then you won't know about the other things so that mm -hmm. was the reason where totally i true, because i tried to include at least five 
of the most recent advances that we use mm -hmm. on field mm -hmm. so i hope i have done yes. justice to the topic <laughs> and uh, yes i'm totally totally you have done a really very great thing actually because uh, we were able to personally speaking i was able to understand different types of things what are currently having happening in the market and what yeah. things are going on so this was yeah. really incredible done thank you That's thank you all. so much yeah thank you <laughs> any questions and, uh, anyone there is some doubt yeah uh, sanket thakur is asking uh, to uh, is there a research paper for bfr uh bfr there are research papers but the quality of the research is questionable because it's something that is um, um you know it's not done on a on a large scale like like we have uh, systematic reviews meta analysis kind of stuff B there is not that level of evidence when it comes to bfr Mm -hmm. Because it is much, it's it's Any, very recent, comparatively quite recent. So there is not much research that has gone into it. So I personally mm -hmm. don't uh, uh, do much of BFR. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I hope you got got your answer, Sanket. Yeah. Uh, they are. Uh, he yes, you can use it. So you can use can it for a wide range, range of wide range of athletes. athletes. Yes, yes, yes. You can use it for uh, all kind of athletes. Uh, it is, it is effective. Like the athletes who use it, they do give a feedback that yes, it is effective. But if you ask me from an academic point of view of the literature review or the evidence based practice, it's not much. The the on paper evidence that you know the published article or something that is not much. There are very few articles which are experimental studies and case studies kind of thing, but not too many systematic reviews and meta analysis. but uh, of course see um, when it comes to sports physiotherapy or as a sports physio my um, primary uh, my primary feedback will be from my athlete if my athlete is giving results mm -hmm. with that therapy i would go with that irrespective of what totally. the research says totally i'm totally yeah any more more doubt Ma'am, uh, what are the on-field uh, trends we can say about on-field uh, happening things recently, on which is field, advanced? Uh, see, on, in when we talk of on-field advances, uh, they, they are still actually following a lot of conventional things because on-field, actually, if you go to see, you cannot do much when the athlete is actually injured on-field. At the most, what is done in majority of the times is the use of epicolent spray, and the athlete is taken off. if there is a grave or serious mm -hmm. injury they have to be transported to a tertiary care setting as a physio a uh, maximum what you do on field is use of cryo you can use taping it's not possible to do iastm or mfr tremendously on field because when we talk of on field rehab it means that you are giving that short duration treatment and the athlete is going back into the game so they have hardly one or two minutes so what we do on field primary Really is more of taping and you know those conventional, not ideally conventional per se, but uh, more of those other kind of approaches. We don't use these technologies on field. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's great, ma'am. Any more, any more doubts? i hope things were very much clear people have very less doubts i guess <laughs> that's true. okay i'm glad if they don't if, if they have understood i'm really happy and i'm sorry about the uh am i audible now yes ma'am yeah so there is a question about the duration and uh, frequency of bfr 
so uh, please let me clear out first that these uh, treatment strategies or these technological advances uh, it's not the whole and soul of treatment it is uh, all these things are used as an adjunct so remember that any any form of treatment that you use even if you use cupping you use dry needling bfr you use variable resistance all these will comprise of uh, i mean this will be a part of your composite treatment it will not be the only treatment so your sessions are going to be short like if you are giving bfr you may give say 10 to 15 uh, minutes of a bfr therapy because that is primarily for your strengthening so your treatment duration is going to be short duration because you are uh, creating an uh, anaerobic environment in the patient system so your treatment duration cannot be very long and the frequency obviously will depend on the athlete's requirement you can give it say twice or thrice a week but preferably it's not given on a day to day basis because of the lactic acid production and the metabolite production yeah sure i can share the opportunities for uh, students who are interested in uh, sports or even if you are interested in pursuing pg in sports definitely please connect with me i'll guide you and uh, get you to the appropriate uh, place where you want to go i will definitely guide you with that i'll be more than happy actually <laughs> to guide any student who needs any help any other doubts Does anyone have any other queries? So, can we end the session here? Hello, ma'am. Yeah. It was amazing session with you. Thank you. I guess uh, we will be sharing a link for the feedback, and okay. after the filling the uh, the form. Uh, all the past participants can leave the meet, but till then they have to stay okay, tuned. Sure, sure. And the information, the knowledge you have was amazing, and it thank was you. an honor to have you here. Thank you, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Okay, all right. Yeah. So can I sign off? Sure, ma'am.